We have breaking news tonight in the investigations of former President Donald Trump. The New York Times is reporting that former Trump aide Hope Hicks was seen entering District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office in Manhattan today as his investigation continues into a six-figure hush money payment Trump gave porn star Stormy Daniels. The Times reports that Hicks is the seventh witness to meet with Bragg since he convened a grand jury to hear evidence in the case earlier this year. But, quote, it could not be immediately determined whether Ms. Hicks, who also served in the White House, was testifying before the grand jury or was only meeting with prosecutors to answer their questions. And in Georgia, where Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis her investigation into efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election continues. Republicans seem like they might be getting nervous about her next steps. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution is reporting that tonight, Georgia's Republican-controlled House of Representatives has passed its version of a bill aimed at reining in so-called rogue prosecutors. Last week, the Georgia State Senate passed their own version of a similar bill. Both bills allow for prosecutors to be disciplined and even removed by a proposed oversight commission. Members of the commission would be handpicked by the governor, lieutenant governor, speaker of the House, and other top political positions in the state, all of which are currently held by Republicans. As these bills make their way through the Gold Dome, District Attorney Willis is speaking up. She told The Times, quote, for the hundreds of years we've had prosecutors, this has been unnecessary. But now, all of a sudden, this is a priority. And it is racist. Once the differences between the two bills are worked out, the proposals are expected to be signed into law by Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, possibly as soon as a few weeks from now, and implemented by the end of this year. Joining us now, Paul Butler, a professor of law at Georgetown University and a former federal prosecutor. He is an MSNBC legal analyst. Also with us, Harry Lippman. He is a former U.S. attorney and former deputy assistant attorney general. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank you both for being here. Harry, let me start with you and with the Manhattan District Attorney's investigation into the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. How important a witness is Hope Hicks in that investigation? You know, potentially, she's pretty important. So first, at the time, she's kind of Trump's fix-it person in general. And so this was a problem that needed to be fixed. But also, we know she was on a phone call with Trump himself and Michael Cohen when the, the day they first learned that Stormy Daniels was seeking uh, hush money. And she was on a phone call with Michael Cohen the day after he wired the money. Now, you're right that there, we don't know um, specifically if she was in the grand jury or not, my best guess is they brought her in and they talked to her. They don't want to put her in the grand jury until they know for certain what she's going to say. But having been privy to those two phone calls and having served in the kind of fix-it role, she could have some pretty good evidence to contribute to the overall mm. charges. Mm. All right, Paul, let's, let's turn to these proposals making their way through the Georgia Capitol. They seem downright, downright dangerous to me. Am I wrong to feel that way? They're dangerous and they're anti-democratic, Jonathan. This is a power grab by Georgia Republicans who are mad about democratic jurisdictions, which in Georgia means mainly black jurisdictions, electing prosecutors who don't want to lock up people for low-level drug offenses or who say that they won't prosecute women and medical providers for abortion-related crimes. It's not necessary to have a law to remove bad Apple prosecutors. Under present law, Georgia prosecutors who abuse their office can already be removed by state lawmakers, and they can be brought up before the Georgia State Bar to have their license suspended. This law just doesn't make sense. For example, it says prosecutors have to bring charges in every case or explain why not. Jonathan, adultery is a crime in Georgia. Does that mean that prosecutors should investigate and prosecute everybody who's guilty of that crime? I'll take that as a rhetorical <laughs> question. Paul, Paul, I've got, a, I got another one for you. So the Georgia lieutenant governor, Burt Jones, he's already been notified that he's a target of Willis's investigation. But under these proposals, he'd get to make an appointment 
to the Oversight Commission. Do these folks not care about the obvious conflict of interest here? Jonathan, I'm going to take that as a rhetorical question. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> it's, a, it's a conflict of interest. You should not get to vote on your own private prosecutor, or better said, the person who, if they got your case, wouldn't prosecute you because you they know that you have the power to remove them from office. So it's an obvious um, conflict, uh, I would say, only in Georgia. But we're seeing laws like this limiting the power of prosecutors when people, usually Republicans, don't like what they're doing. These laws are coming uh, to the extension of lawmakers all over the country. Mm -hmm. You know, Harry, uh, Donald Trump attacked D.A. Willis and her investigation at CPAC over the weekend while insisting that he still intends to run for president in 2024, even if he's indicted. Listen to this from former U.S. attorney Chris Christie. Can someone run for office and do debates and give interviews when they're under indictment and, and not make their situation worse? No, I think it's impossible for them not to make the situation worse. Every time you open your mouth, as you know, in this kind of situation, you run the real risk of, 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 of adding complications uh, to a case where you could lose your liberty. And that's why defense lawyers always rightfully tell their clients to keep quiet um, because you don't need to make that situation more complicated because your liberty is at stake. Um, Harry, I mean, Chris Christie is right, right? Right. This is what makes Trump the worst client in the world. But, you know, <laughs> he, I think he intends to try to pursue this maybe on two tracks or just one, the political track. He said astonishing things on Saturday. He said, I am your warrior. I am your justice. I am your redemption for anyone who's been ignored. In other words, he's trying to actually have a political strategy of sort of turning it around and having everyone, almost in messianic language, having everyone identify with them. Terrible strategy normally for any kind of criminal defendant, but, but of course, you know, where it's one once more a kind of unprecedented situation. But he will clearly say he did Saturday and he'll continue to say things that will be toxic for him if and when he ever takes the stand. But he's um, planning on the on being Trump and being political and uh, doing it that way. You know, it could be a disaster, but he's, you know, been uh, to date somewhat successful in this strategy. Of course, what it does is roils the country even more and makes and, and inflames the same kind of sentiments that brought us January 6th. Um, counselor, I just want us to correct the record. Uh, Donald Trump did not say, I am your redemption. It was even worse than that. It was, I am your retribution. Um, They're so exactly right. For anyone who's ever been wronged or ignored, my correction well yeah. noted.